Hello friends, I love to travel and my work often takes me to places and more often than not I get to catch up with friends with whom I've not been in touch personally for years altogether but I'm connected with them on Facebook and in most of the catch-ups one thing that I find very common in all these friends is that they think I have a great professional life, I have a perfect relationship, that I have a great kid and that my life is perfect and as we dig deeper in the conversations they realize that I also have the hardships and the struggles in my professional life like they do. I also have some rough days in our relationship like they do. I also face the tantrums of my kid like they do. And my life isn't as perfect as it seems, just like theirs. Facebook isn't a social networking idea anymore. It has turned out to be a self-assessment tool for the quality of lives that we lead. And more important and dangerous is the fact that it's obsessive and addictive. A University of Michigan report even states that the increasing use of Facebook among young adults creates an increased lack of well-being. And that is where the problem with Facebook is. It's creating an illusion of how miserable our lives are, while in reality, although imperfect, our lives are still beautiful. So let me set a few things right about our Facebook lives here. Myth number one. Everybody seems to have a perfect life, except you. The reality is, nobody has a perfect life, only the ability to present it perfectly. A friend of mine posted something wonderful last week about his partner, that she was understanding, caring, loving, but he chose to ignore to post anything this morning about the fight that he had with her last night. Another friend of mine posted about his accomplishments at his workplace, but he chose to ignore to post about the 18 hour days that he has been spending for the last 6 months and not having any family time. Another kid posted something about his match winning innings in a cricket match but chose to ignore to post anything about his 5 point GPA that he got. What you see on Facebook are only a few frames of someone's life and more importantly only the chosen ones. Remember, life isn't a single picture frame, it's a motion picture. And there's a lot more than what meets your eye. So before you think someone's life is perfect, remember, just like your pose, what you see is what is being shown. Myth number two, everyone's life is happening. Reality, something is happening in everyone's life, including yours. When you have over 100 people in your Facebook friends list, isn't it but obvious that every time you check into your news feed, you'd find someone celebrating, someone sharing a moment of joy, someone accomplishing a six pack app, someone going on a vacation, someone being awarded in their job. And if nothing is happening, someone would be sharing a memory and say it's time. This in turn makes most of us think about the nothingness or the lack of happenings in our life and adds to the misery in our life. And in some cases, we start projecting a fake happening life, not realizing that it builds an inferiority complex within ourselves. Myth number three, the bigger the friends list, the more connected or networked someone is. Reality. That's like saying, I have the local phone directory in my mobile phone contacts and I know everyone. Did you know, an average person spends about an hour on Facebook daily. That's about three years of a lifetime. And that is just an average. So you can imagine the amount of time that young adults spend today on Facebook that much lesser time for the real world relationships. The irony of the times that we live in is that we are connected far more than ever before but are lonelier than any other generation has ever been in the past. The difference in the relationships that we build today from what has been in the past is in the depth of relationships. Real world relationships aren't built with likes, comments or shares but are built by sharing lives through thick and thin, ups and downs, and sharing of moments. So that's the reason you can never compare a real-world 10-year relationship with a 10-year-old friend anniversary that you get on Facebook. Let me share a secret with you. We don't need a big list of friends, just a few, pure and true. And to build true relationships, get out of Facebook, get on face-to-face. -face. Meet people, interact with them, Get back in touch, make that phone call, share your moments of joy and pain in person. Remember, the fact is, technology is never the culprit. 
we are slaves of our own making. Technology is a good servant, but a bad master. Who are you with Facebook?